Hi everyone, my name is David Capetti and in today's video I wanted to share a trick if you are trying to create wireframe structures for architecture. So one of the things in Grasshopper that I had issues with in the past was having redundant surfaces or redundant edges. And so what I'll do here is I'll just start by creating a wavy curve and I'll just extrude this up. And I'll take this surface and I'll bring it inside a grasshopper. So I'll go here to surface. I'll right click here and go to set one surface. And I'll hide the geometry inside of Rhino so I can just be looking at the grasshopper script. So now that we have this surface here, let's divide it using isotrim. So I'll bring in isotrim and also divide domain squared and I'll plug in the segments into the domain and let's plug in these here what this does is subdivides it 10 vertically and 10 horizontally so let's decrease it let's just say 5 and then I'll make a copy here and have a different one As you can see with this, I can already do a wireframe structure by taking this surface, going to curves. And if you plug in the isotrim uh, surfaces into just a curve component, it actually extracts the curves for each panel. And with this, we can double click here and go to a pipe. And let's plug in these curves here. But as you can see, um, sometimes that doesn't work, and that's because they're closed. So what we have to do here is explode them. And that'll make it work. So let's go here to caps, change that to round. But as you can see, when we take these pipes and I bake it, I'll take this and move it to the right here. And I'll also go to, here we can go to shaded mode. Cool. As you can see, when I click here, we have two. And that's because when we baked, when we bake this surface, the isotrim surface, you can see that each one of these is separate. And what happens is we'll have two curves here. One that belongs to the one to the right and then this one that belongs to the one to the left so the way that i uh, fix that issue is by joining all of those isotrim surfaces so i'll go to vrep join i'll plug that in and now if we bake this one notice that we still have the creases that we created using isotrim but now we only have one. So if I hold down control shift and click, I select only one. The other way to select the crease on the inside is sub objects. If you select that, you can pick say two of these and you could even, you know, play around with that. So this is what I do. So I can, instead of using the curves from out of the isotrim, I'll do it out of the joint B reps. But as you can see, it only did the outside. So, what I actually like to do, and it works a little bit better, is B rep edges, and that extracts both the naked and interior ones so we can have them in separate ones so we can do the naked ones and the interior ones here and for here we for this one we can say one and then do divided by two so we'll do a quick math for the size here and as you can see when we take these and we bake them There's only one in between. And so this makes your uh, design a lot more, um, a lot easier for the computer to, 
to do and also when you bake things you don't have twice as many and now that I've shown you some of those things let me show you a trick that I learned and this is to take these pipes and let's just disable them and let's take these curves the naked outside curves and we'll go to a curve component then we'll go to a pipe component but this time instead of doing a regular pipe and I learned this from uh, Michael at Wickerson Studio so check him out he has some good information too uh, this is variable uh, pipe variable and what this allows you to do is so the pipes are not just straight they can be they can have um, some change along it so let's plug in the curves here next we'll do a range also we'll do the next one is the graph mapper The important thing is that we take the curves, we right click here and go to reparameterize. And this is how you plug it in. So starting from 0 to 1, and it steps 0.1, and it has, so let's look at the output here. It has 0 to 1, and it has 11 values. Now we'll use this graph type. Let's go to. parabola and as you can see the parabola now is showing up on the pipes here so if we take the caps and we go to round you see that now we have those pipes varying in size with within that now if you want that to have a little bit more thickness at the bottom then we would bring this value up And we can play around a little bit with the pipes. So that's kind of an additional thing here. But the idea is to be able to use a wireframe that doesn't have redundant curves. So let's take this and let's add it in. And let's increase the subdivisions. Actually, this way we'll go like five. Cool. So hopefully you learned something new with this tutorial. It's pretty straightforward. Just the idea is to how to subdivide using isotrim um, and creating a wireframe structure. And here at the end, we uh, created a variable uh, size pipe. So it goes from like a wide to a narrow one. And the idea here is that if you visualize the line, each one of these lines being here, this is actually from zero to one. So it shows you that it goes from this point, it goes in. So um, it's a little bit tricky, but once you get the idea of how this works, it makes a lot of sense as to how you can create some really interesting uh, and fun geometries just by changing the, the size of your pipe. So if you, uh, if you would like to check out more videos, I have more on this channel or on the website. Make sure to check that out. Um, make sure to subscribe for future content, and I hope to see you next time.